The European Union withdrawal agreement bill got the royal assent this week. It was then solemnly signed, sealed and ratified by Ursula von der Leyen, the new president of the European Commission. We're finally out. But you could be forgiven for being unaware of this historic occasion, because it only merited a footnote on news bulletins. No one is interested in Brexit anymore. Nothing to see here. Yet only two months ago we were in the midst of the most intense period of national disputation since the winter of discontent in 1979. Everyone was hanging on the words of the speaker John Burko, waiting to discover his latest procedural innovation. Now he's in civvy street struggling with bullying allegations. The Commons chamber echoed with the voices of celebrity Remainers, like Dominic Grieve, Anna Soubry, Rory Stewart. They are all now in the wilderness. Gone, too, the flag-waving fanatics outside the Palace of Westminster. BBC political presenters no longer have to compete with the megaphone cries of Stop Brexit. Well, no one is going to shed any more tears about all that. The Brexit debate turned into a toxic culture war which had very little to do with the real issues of trade and citizenship. Everyone was too busy calling each other Nazis and racists or unpatriotic appeasers. Now the withdrawal bill has finally passed, everyone has lost interest. It's about boring stuff like trade. Yet it marks a historic defeat for the Westminster parliamentary system. The endless procedural wrangles and court actions of the last three years were in retrospect a huge waste of time and intellectual effort. But it's worse than that. We've been left with a legislative horlicks far more damaging than should have been the case. The Withdrawal Act is essentially Theresa May's Brexit bill, but without the various concessions offered to Labour, without the Northern Ireland backstop and, most important, without parliamentary oversight. The protections on workers' rights and the environment have been removed from the legislation, as has the idea of a regulatory level playing field. Protections for refugee children have been scrapped, along with other Lords' amendments. The option of an extension to the transition period, due to end in December, is now ruled out by the Act. The much-debated political declaration is shorn of any legislative significance. MPs will have no say on the negotiating mandate in the coming trade talks. Parliament will have no role in scrutinizing the future trade deal. And that's not all. The Henry VIII provisions allowing the government to change laws by secondary legislation, by passing Parliament altogether, have been beefed up. The courts will not have to abide by the letter of EU law during the transition period. It's a comprehensive power grab. The Scottish Parliament will not be getting it for more on this story, visit the news article link.